now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite online bookseller. There have been some people on Facebook who have been sending me links to a response video the Veganator made about my karma comes to white America video. And to those people, I have this to say to you. I do not watch anyone's response videos, and that has been my policy since the blogger days back in 2007. In fact, I had someone take my blog, Why Real Men Avoid Single Mothers, and take it to the Sana G Morning Show, and they pretty much made that blog go viral for the second time. And my response back then was no response, and my response in this situation is no response. Now that video I presented, talking about how karma has come to white America, that was my opinion, that was my view of things, and that's what I believe. Karma has come to white America regarding this whole war on drugs. And if you disagree with that, you are free to do that. As a writer and a publisher, I have no problem with free speech, and I have no problem with people expressing their opinions regarding things. I do not get into a back and forth with people. That is not my policy. Now, for some strange reason, that video, Karma Comes to White America, has been demonetized. And I'm believing it has to do with some of these butthurt white people who cannot deal with the fact that this whole karma that, that has happened is because of the seeds they have sowed in America regarding the destruction of black people. And they don't want to take responsibility for their hand in their own self-destruction in their plans to destroy black people. Now, if you want to support that video, you can help me by donating a dollar or more to the Patreon by clicking the link in the description box, because that will help me be able to make more videos in the future. And the big problem with white people today is that they're in denial, and they don't want to admit that they are reaping what they sowed with this opioid crisis. Now, this opioid crisis is them reaping what they sowed from the war on drugs. Now, your Richard Nixon pretty much planted the seeds of this war on drugs way back in the 1970s, and 50 years later almost, we are pretty much seeing white America reap what it sowed regarding that so-called war on drugs. This is no different than what happened in the black community with the Negro children of the corn. Now, in that video, I pretty much discussed how the African-American Negro is pretty much reaping what they're sowing with, by supporting the welfare state and white liberal policies, and how that has created a gener two or three generations of these Negro children of the corn. And while a lot of white people praise that Negro children of the corn video, Many of them don't want to take responsibility for the karma that has come to white America due to the opioid crisis. Now, this opioid crisis has nothing to do, I believe, with these Jews. It has something to do with white people, because when it comes down to white people, they don't want to own up to the dysfunction that they are creating in their own America. This is why their America will never be great again, because they don't want to do something as simple as acknowledging the problem. Because in order to make America great again for white people, white people are going to have to sit down and acknowledge their hand in their own problems. And their problems pretty much, again, started in the 1960s by people like your Timothy Leary, because they embraced the ideologies of people like your Timothy Leary, who pretty much was on that Harvard campus telling people to tune out and go and take this LSD, and these hippies were telling them to go out here and to smoke weed. And they thought that, that because they were white and male, or white and female, they were pretty much indestructible. So they went out here and started smoking weed, and they started taking LSD, and then they went on to harder drugs like heroin and cocaine, and they were pretty much, while they were taking these drugs, thinking that it was only destroying black people, and it wasn't only destroying black people. That was the propaganda put on the screens of televisions and radios all throughout the media. They pretty much presented the image of drugs destroying black people, and they only showed you black drug addicts so that you wouldn't feel bad about your own addiction 
and your own life that is pretty much falling apart. And because of that, white people refuse to acknowledge that they have a problem. Even now, they refuse to acknowledge that they have a problem because instead of wording it and saying, I have an addiction, they call it an opioid crisis. How is it a crisis when you have a problem that you refuse to acknowledge? Because it's the big problem with white people is they don't want to admit. You're the ones out here taking these drugs. You're the ones who are out here saying you're declaring war on drugs, but in the meanwhile, you're the one out here buying most of the drugs because most of the deaths from drugs these days come from white people taking opioids such as oxycontin, oxycodone, and heroin. And it also comes from white people taking methamphetamine and having crystal meth labs. Moreover, what is really fueling this op so-called opioid crisis is white people pretty much glamorizing drug use like they did on television shows like that 70s show where they show Eric Foreman and his friends smoking weed or shows like Two and a Half Men where they show Charlie or the Ashton Kutcher character um, Holden smoking up or Breaking Bad where you pretty much had an entire television show revolving around meth use. But you think that it's just a black problem because that's what the me news media has told you that oh drug use is just a black problem. It's about black people. They pretty much are the ones selling all the illegal drugs. But they don't look at the white doctors who give them prescriptions. They don't look at the white pharmacist who looks the other way. And they don't look at the guy in their own neighborhood. No, those aren't drug dealers in the eyes of many spellbound white people. No, drug dealers in their eyes are white people. And this is why those thorns and briars have grown in the white community because white people refuse to acknowledge that they have a problem in their community due to other white people selling them drugs. No, they wanted to go declare war on drugs and when they said drug war on drugs they meant war on black people because most of the police and law enforcement pretty much went after black people and the laws such as the 1997 crime bill were meant to imprison black people for selling crack cocaine, meanwhile giving lesser sentences to powder cocaine and other drugs such as opioids, um, Oxycontin, and other medical drugs that were being abused. They didn't want to deal with that, and they still don't want to deal with that, because when it comes down to these type of drugs, there are the, the laws are still the same. White people don't get punished in the same way. In fact, we're talking more about rehabilitation and therapy, and we never talked about rehabilitation and therapy during the days when I was growing up during the crack epidemic. And during that crack epidemic, all many politicians like Ronald Reagan and George Bush talked about was declaring war on drugs, mandatory minimums, life sentences, and even the death penalty for selling drugs. However, when white people are suffering, it is pretty much cleaned up and spun as an opioid crisis, and we need to get people rehabilitation. The same rehabilitation that your Republicans right now are trying to strip out of the Obamacare that they pretty much hate because a black president passed a health care reform bill. Now, I'm no fan of Barack Obama, but I see how white people in their intense hatred for Barack Obama are out here trying to destroy legislation that is pretty much going to benefit them during this opioid crisis. And it shows us how dysfunctional many white people are and again how spellbound many white people are about fitting into the box of white supremacy and blindly following the policies of white supremacy even though those policies are destroying white people because that war on drugs is pretty much destroying white people right now and they just don't want to admit that karma has come to white America. White America is reaping the same bitter harvest that black America reaped with the Negro children of the corn and in both cases no one wants to admit that there is a problem. In order to make America great again and truly great again, Americans are going to have to acknowledge that they pretty much have a drug problem. Americans are going to have to admit that they have a problem. And that's the big problem with white America. They want to say 
someone else is responsible for the opioid crisis when the person who was responsible for the opioid crisis is looking white America in the mirror. They refuse to acknowledge that you are the ones who brought the drugs into the black community to destroy black people and instead of it destroying black people it is now starting to destroy you because the same poison you used to, in, to infect the black community your own people were out here taking on the regular and they've been taking it on the regular since the 1990s because I remember watching in all my children where they talked about Erica Kane pretty much being addicted to these painkillers and a lot of people didn't even pay that story any attention because they didn't want to deal with the drug problem in their own community. So people have been trying to tell you about this problem, but the problem is white America refuses to acknowledge it. In fact, they are pretty much so in denial about the problem that you cannot work really constructively on a solution. While bodies pile up in morgues and they have no room to pretty much store them anymore, white people still are sitting there saying that it was somebody else's fault instead of admitting that it is their own fault. The state of your country's dysfunction starts with we the people. And the problem is, white people don't want to admit that karma has come to white America. They are reaping what they sowed, greater than they sowed, later than they sowed, and that they have to acknowledge that this problem was created by a generation before, and that we have to pretty much acknowledge that we, or the people, were the ones who started it. When it comes down to white people, they don't want to admit the problem. They don't want to admit that they created this war on drugs. Moreover, they have lost this war on drugs, and they lost it way back in the early 90s. They pretty much lost it a long time ago, and now they pretty much are in denial about how deep the problems are regarding it. This is karma coming to America. This is America reaping what it is sowed. And the sad part is, Americans are too arrogant to admit that they are responsible for the dysfunctional state of their union right now. When it comes down to white America, they just don't want to admit that we the people pretty much have this drug problem not because of outside sources, but because of white people who are so racist they wanted to destroy black people, and now their own drugs are destroying them. And this is something they just don't want to admit. Karma has come to white America, but white America still remains in denial about the problem. I guess they have to pretty much see white America pretty much go into serious decline for them to say, you know, we have a problem, and the problem is us trying to destroy other people without thinking about how those consequences and ramifications pretty much are going to affect us. This war on drugs was a war on black people, and the consequences of that war are now having ramifications in the white community, and the white community really needs to come to terms with that. They need to come to terms with the fact that their war on drugs pretty much is a disaster, a complete failure, and that you had slogans in the 80s talking about just say no, but it seems like, again, you just don't understand basic economics with this whole drug thing, and those same basic economic principles that were destroying the black community at one time in the 1980s and the early 1990s are now destroying the white community. because. As long as there are people demanding these drugs, there is always going to be somebody supplying them. And that's pretty much what destroyed the black community, because just as they locked up one drug dealer, another drug dealer took his place. And that hydra pretty much grew and evolved until people started seeing during the crack epidemic, the last days of the crack epidemic, that it wasn't black people who were pretty much being destroyed by crack as they presented in many of their media images, it was white people being destroyed by crack. And when they found that out, all of a sudden, slowly, we started to see what the, after Giuliani in here in New York started putting more law enforcement in place, people stopped pushing and glamorizing crack cocaine, and crack cocaine pretty much went out of vogue. 
when white people start seeing that the face of of um, opioid abuse and crystal meth abuse is mostly white women, I think we're going to see a sort of a pullback in the exact same way. But the big problem with white America is, is that they're going to have to acknowledge that karma has come to America and that they have reaped what they have sowed greater than they've sowed, later than they've sowed, and it is a bitter harvest. If you want to see more content like this, I urge you to donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box or trying some of my SJS Direct titles. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.